G'day, I'm Ewan Ferguson, CFA Chief Officer. Happy Autumn, it's the 2nd of uh, March and I'm here at the Traugan Incident Control Centre. Uh, just been down on a visit to the staging area, been down the mine. I visit the mine uh, every couple of days just to assess from the ground how our firefighting techniques are going and assess performance. Um, and also to meet with the incident controller and the regional controller. Um, a couple of things I just want to say at the outset, and the first is that uh, uh, what's been occurring over the last six or seven weeks, and it's really exemplified by this Hazelwood mine fire, has been that we've moved into a different level of interagency cooperation. Uh, everywhere I go uh, around the Hazelwood mine, you see SES, you see MFB, CFA, uh, Victoria Police, uh, DEPI, Parks Victoria, uh, all operating as one integrated team uh, and uh, coming up to uh, the various members who I speak to. Uh, they're all really happy to be working together. I think we've set a new benchmark, so well done on that. The, the other thing about this fire at Hazelwood, we have called on resources from a number of uh, interstate fire services, uh, Tasmania Fire Service, ACT, Airport Rescue Firefighters, uh, ADF Firefighters, Queensland, uh, New South Wales and South Australian Metropolitan Fire Service. Um, as I speak, we still have 10 CFA fire stations which are being crewed by New South Wales Fire Rescue Service and that allows us to release uh, CFA staff uh, into the, uh, the, the mine fire. Uh, the mine fire, this is uh, week three uh, today, Sunday, uh, and uh, I've just come from a public meeting and one of the things I wanted to reinforce to the community of Moor and the Latre Valley is that we will put this fire out. Uh, there's absolutely no doubt that uh, we have uh, the means to put this fire out but we do need to have the assistance of the weather. We know that we uh, sometimes regress when there's strong winds and high temperatures. So as we record this next Tuesday, Tuesday night and Wednesday morning are going to be tough, uh, but uh, we are making exceptionally good progress. We have a uh, well thought through method of firefighting using the airport fire tenders and, and traditional pumpers to cool the area down. We then have uh, aerial pumpers uh, with and without uh, compressed air foam units that lay sloppy and then fluffy foam uh, and then that's followed up by uh, our ground crews and, uh, and, and the new heavy concept tankers. So we've got a really well proven method of firefighting and then what we do is we transition to uh, the use of uh, mechanical uh, um, excavators and so on. Um, we are also uh, working very closely with the owner of the mine, GDF Sewers, uh, and the, their principal contractor, uh, RTL. Uh, they're providing a range of uh, plant, including cranes that they erect monitors on, uh, and they're very similar in effect to a, a teleburn. Uh, we're also seeing uh, 30,000 litre industrial uh, tankers being used by the industry to quench those little hot spots and then dig them out. So it's a really concerted uh, and cooperative effort. The last 10 days have seen a concerted effort on what we call the northern batters at the northern side of the mine. Uh, over 50% of that is now extinguished uh, and a substantial part of that which is not extinguished is, is very, very cool. Over the next uh, week or so, uh, there'll be a shift of resources onto the southeastern batters. Uh, we, in, in adopting a prioritisation of the batters, are very much guided by the amount of smoke uh, which is coming off the fire, and uh, we're trying to minimise the amount of smoke which is uh, blowing into uh, particularly more south and other parts of the Latrobe Valley. We will have some challenges in the next couple of weeks. Uh, next Tuesday afternoon, Tuesday night, Wednesday, uh, will present us some challenges. Uh, I just want to commend all of the people who, who are involved in this long-running firefight uh, at the Regional Command, Incident Control, uh, and also at the staging area, particularly for those crews who are on the fire ground. Um, it's not an easy environment. It's hot, it's dirty, 
it's smelly, uh, the atmosphere is very smoky. We've got a range of uh, health monitoring systems which are very, very important in ensuring that uh, people aren't exposed to undue concentrations of carbon monoxide and smoke and particulates. Uh, those procedures are very important. We're constantly reviewing them, having them peer reviewed. Uh, could I say that uh, we're also working very closely with uh, the unions and association, the uh, UFU uh, have been exceptional in the way in which uh, they've drawn matters to our attention first and uh, allowed us time to uh, implement a solution uh, and also the uh, VFBV have been very good in uh, highlighting where they have concerns and allowing us time to uh, try and resolve those. So, uh, great effort so far, a very hectic three weeks, uh, notwithstanding the fact that three weeks ago we, we also had uh, significant bushfires all over the state, uh, and that came on from the tail end of the uh, fires we had in the Grampians, and, and also those fires in Far East Gippsland, some of which would have been burning now for about seven weeks. Everyone's getting tired, uh, fatigue is a major issue. Uh, I uh, close this uh, with a plea to continue to uh, think firstly about the safety of yourselves and your crew members uh, and about the safety of the community. Uh, think carefully about managing your fatigue levels. When it's time to knock off, knock off and go home. Don't linger around. Uh, keep uh, observing what the risks are talking it up with your crew members and come home safe.